Hi everyone, welcome to Think Smart Home. Today we are going to install Casa OS on our Poxmox node. So, what is Casa OS? It's a community based open source software which lets you self host applications and services with a very clean and easy to use web GUI. With Casa OS, you can start your own home lab in under 15 minutes. It's a great starting point if you are starting your own home lab or if you are quickly and easy want to sell for services like Home Assistant, Pi-hole, Homebridge, Jellyfin, Plex and much more. Now even though it's called Casa OS but it needs a base OS to run. It does come with pre-installed on Zima board but if you don't have Zima board you can still set it up on any machine which you may have. If you are already running services and want to move them over to Casa OS, then the easiest way I would say is to buy an old workstation from your local marketplace which is expendable of course. For example, my old HP Z800. I am running it in my home lab and it can go up to 384 gigs of RAM. 12 cores of CPU with total of 24 threads. So it all depends upon your use cases. You can go over the hardware which suits your need. You can start it with light specs and then slowly keep adding as you go along. Alright, so in today's tutorial we will install Ubuntu on our Poxmox as a VM and run Casa OS on it. This will give our home lab a nice GUI. Now I would assume you have already installed and set up Proxmox. If you haven't done that already, please watch my previous videos. I'll leave the link down in the description. So now the first step is to download the ISO file for Ubuntu which we will use for the installation. So go to the Ubuntu server website and download the ISO file. I'll leave the download link in the description below. I have already downloaded this so I'll skip this step. Once the file is downloaded, you need to go and upload it onto your ISO images on your local storage. So I have already done that so I'll again skip this step. Once the upload is complete, you should see the ISO image on your local storage on your box box. Alright, once that's done, Click on create VM, select your node and then give your VM an ID. I'll give it a 150 and then give your VM a name and then click next. Now here we need to select the ISO file which we just downloaded. So I've selected my storage which is the local one where I just uploaded the ISO file and then select the ISO file and then click next. Here under system I leave everything as default and then click next. Here for the disk you can select any size you want to use from your Postmark storage. So for this tutorial I'll set it 100 gigs and I have selected my storage which is the shared storage from my NAS and then click next. Now we need to give some CPU cores. So for this tutorial I'll give it 4. You can give these CPU cores as many as you want based on your available hardware. So click next. And for memory I'll give it 4 gigs which I think should be good enough for this one. And then click next. For the network I'll leave it as a default. Click next. And then start the VM after the creation and then click on finish. So it might take some time. Alright so VM is created so I need to go to console and see the VM should be booting up. Alright the VM has now booted through the ISO so now we can start the installation for Ubuntu. So the first step is to select the language. So I'll select English. 
Now the next step is to select the keyword configuration. So I'm happy with the English US, so I'll hit enter. So here I need to choose the type of installation. So I'm happy with the Ubuntu server, so I'll hit enter again. For the network configurations, I'll leave to commit under DHCP. So I'll hit enter. I don't need to do any proxy configuration, so I'll hit enter again. All right, so here to download, it's just testing some mirror location. So give it some time. Once it's done, you can hit enter. So here is the storage configuration. So you can see it is picking up the 100 gigs. If we just enter while we are setting up our VM. So I'm happy with this setting. So I'll hit enter. This is a confirmation again to use the whole entire disk. I'll hit enter again. And then this is just a warning that everything on the drive will be destroyed. I'll continue. And now here you can give your name. I'll give things smart home and I'll give it a server name for now. I'll just give it a temporary name or maybe Casa OS. Alright, I have entered all the details, so I'm happy with that. I'll hit enter. And then here, I don't need to use Ubuntu Pro, so I'll continue. So now it's asking if I want to install OpenSSH. So sometime it comes in handy, so I'll select it to install and then hit enter. I don't want to install any add-ons, so I'll skip it. Alright, now it might take some time to download and install Ubuntu on your Proxmox, so it will run as a VM. While this is happening, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Also, hit the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video about smart home automation, network security and storage. Alright, the installation is complete. Now we can reboot our VM. Alright, we are getting some error because it's still trying to boot from the installation medium, which in this case is the ISO file. So we need to remove the ISO file. So we can go to hardware and select the CD DVD drive and then click on edit and then select do not use any media. And then go back to your console again and then enter reboot. So this time it will reboot and come back. Alright, so now this time is booting up into Ubuntu OS. So we'll wait until it is finished. Alright, so installation is complete now. We just need to SSH into our Ubuntu server and then run the command as specified on the CAS OS website. So to SSH into a server, we need the IP address. So so we need to log into our server and get the IP address. Alright, so we can see the IP address is 192.168.10.203 in my case. So we need to SSH into our server. So either you can use command prompt or you can use any terminal utility. So we already know the IP address which is in my case 192.168.10.203 so we'll create a new session enter the IP address set and then log into our server again oops I didn't Enter the password properly. I'll try again. All right, we are in. Just need to make sure we log in as a root. All right, so we need to go back and copy the command and just paste it in here. 
or it's so installation has started so we'll have to wait for some time until it is finished and then we'll come back to this all right so installation is complete and we can access her cast OS using the IP address displayed on the screen so we'll go back to our browser again all right so here we go we can see the web GUI for gas iOS click and go and it's first time we are logging in so we have to create an account so I'll quickly do that we are good to go so set the terms and now there, there are a few settings which you can play around the important one is the web GUI so sometime when you are installing some application which needs to use port 80 you might have to come here and then change the default port for your um, web GUI for the cache OS for example the engine X proxy manager uses port 80 so if you are already using port 80 and cache OS it might not work so you might have to come here and update port 80 for cursors to something else and then you can go back and use that one for nginx proxy manager all right so just to give you some overview so this is basically the main power of cash os the one click application installation here you can see there are lots of applications which are ready to install like for example homebridge now i have created a video on how to set up homebridge already so you can skip the installation part from that video and then follow the setup uh, which is after the installation so okay while installing we can push it back to background and maybe install a couple more applications let's say for example Edgard Home I, again for this Edgard Home I have created a video how to set up and configure Edgard Home on your home lab so you can refer to that video i'll leave the link to that video down in the description below the other one i want to mention i believe is the home assistant yeah so so this is the beauty of cas os all those commands those docker compose file creation is just throws everything out of the window you just have to click on the app which you want to install and then it will be ready for you in the case of installation so since we already installed few of them so let's say this is the home page now it's it's good to go all you have to do is just to create an account and it's ready to use so same goes for Edgar home and it will be the same when the home system installation is complete which is in progress right now all right so as you can see the home system installation also complete so you can simply start your onboarding process and create an account and then start creating the automations and adding the integration and devices to your home automation platform so this was a quick video on how to set up SRS on your home lab so as you can see this is a very user friendly and easy to use web GUI where you can install all sorts of different applications and your home lab without any command line permitters or creating any docker compose file so that's it for this video i hope you liked it please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel i'll see you in the next video